Welcome to this episode of Dairy TV. In the last session, we discussed feed planning. In this session, we are going to be discussing feeding and rations. But before we get deeper into this subject, I would like to remind you to hit the subscribe button. In an earlier episode, we were able to, to define the ration. Now, we also discussed planning for the feed to avoid a situation whereby we are either growing a feed that is cheaper and having to buy a feed that is more expensive. We are also avoid avoiding a situation whereby we are feeding cows without knowing what they are supposed to eat. So in this episode, we now look at how do we administer that ration to the cows. And the first thing is, do you know your cow? So we look at knowing your cow. What kind of cow do you have at your farm? Are they big cows, pedigree, Frisian Holsteins? Are they small cows? Are they in between? That is a very important consideration to make before you decide what ration to give. There are two very important factors to consider when we are making the ration. First, how heavy is that cow? Cows are going to feed according to their live weight. In this farm, cows are eating at least 3% of the live weight. That means they understand the weights of the cow before they allocate the ration. And then two, it's about how much milk is that cow producing or what is the productive potential of that cow. The productive potential could have two factors determining it. One is the breed. There are some breeds that will produce more milk than others. And two, the stage of lactation. Cows produce more milk in the early lactation, mid lactation, and decline production towards the late lactation, and then they dry off for a calving. So the stage of lactation also determines how much milk the cow is to produce. And how much milk that cow produces is going to determine how much feed you are going to give. So how well do you know your cow? That is the first question. Do you know the live weight? Have you done an inventory of how many cows you have and what are their respective weights? It's very simple. You take a band and you measure. The workers will be able to understand how to check, how to determine the weight from the, from the, from the girth. Once we know the weight, we record it somewhere. Then two, we also have a record as to when the, car, the cow last calved. The last date of calving tells us at what stage of lactation we are in. We can divide lactation into three stages. The first stage, we are going to assume that we are going to have a 305 days in one lactation because you want to maintain a very, um, a very good calving interval of about a year. So we take away the two months of drying, then we are left with about 300 to 305 days for lactation. For this period, we divide it into 100 days. So the first 100 days from calving, we are going to call it early lactation. The second 100 days, we are going to call it mid lactation. And the third, we are going to call it late lactation. So that is a very, it's, it's very important to actually understand what uh, stage of lactation that cow is in. Let's go back to the issue of how well do you know the cow. If you have the weight and you have the stage of lactation, then we can go ahead and be able to mix the feeds. The most important thing to understand is that you can be able to prepare your cow in such a way that she is going to give you a peak production within the first lactation. During this first lactation, this is a time to be able to make your money from that cow. Because all systems for that cow are encouraging the cow to produce more and more milk. The cow is not yet inseminated. She is not yet preparing for a calving. So the main business is to produce milk. So how much milk you get depends on what you give. So, and then if, if you want to maintain a peak for a longer time, then you determine based on how consistent you are on the feeding. Let me make a point here. Do we give cows, based on, do we give cows feed based on what we have or based on what they need? One major problem that we see in the farms that we visit as consultants is that you see farmers giving uh, cows what they have. 
So therefore, the cows do not end up getting what they need. I'd like, like us to discuss that. If you only have napier grass, is it okay to just give cows napier and dairy meal and then that's it? What informs you to give that napier? And how much will you give? And how much dairy meal will you give? Now, the most important thing to know here is that it is what cows need that we give them. It is not what we have. Actually, if you don't have what cows need, that's a good reason to review your decision to start or run a dairy farm. If then you have what the cows need, then it's a good time to now discuss how do you administer that ration. At that point, we go into a break. When we come back, we discuss administration of the rations. Hi, my name is Sarah Silla. I'm a lab technician at National Dairy Regulatory Laboratory, being based in the chemical section, which acts as a second step for testing after microbial test is done. In this lab, there are some of the tests which we have been conducted, which include a butter fat, alkaline phosphate test, hydrogen peroxide, aflatoxin M1, there's density, there's alcohol testing. To just to mention a few. One of the key tests being done is a aflatoxin M1 test. In aflatoxin M1, if found in milk and milk products, it gives us an idea of the type of feed being fed to the animals. Once milk consumed and it has aflatoxin M1, it may result to cancer to humans. Next is a antibiotic testing, which will give us an idea the type of drug being given to animals. Once such drugs enters into milk, it results to some diseases and results maybe to death. Find out more on what Kenya Dairy Board is doing in the interdairy industry by visiting our website www.kdb.go.ke. Welcome back and I hope you had a, a good break. Now we can discuss how to administer the rations and before we get there, hit the subscribe button so that you can get all these lessons as they come. We have discussed feed planning, now we look at how do we then give this feed to the cows? In what amounts and what are the rules to follow? Now when I came to this farm I found that um, they have been able to record what they fed to their cows this morning. They have dairy meal, 150 kgs. They have hay, which is a grass. This is a, a grass that is cut and baled, six bales, approximately between 13 and 15 kgs per bale. And they have a silage. When I look at the ration, this is, they refer to maize silage, 420 kgs. And then they have a mineral supplement of three kgs. So the dairy meal at 150 kgs and all these other quantities of feed is fed to 13 cows. All these cows are in early lactation. They are within the 100 days since they gave birth. So this is a concentrate, this is a fodder, and this is a fodder. The first rule is the fodder to concentrate ratio. How much is too much? There are some farmers who decide because they want milk production, they want to increase the amount of concentrates in the ration so that they can get more milk. Now, you can be excited in the, short, in the short run, but in the long run, you are killing that cow. It has a lot of problems because the fodder quantities are less in the ration. We always recommend that we have at least more than 50% of the fodder in the ration. It's even better if that quantity of fodder is higher. Then you only give enough concentrates. In this case, we have six bales times 15, that's about 90 kgs for 13 cows, and we have 420 kgs uh, divided by 13. You can be able to see who, how much each cow was given. And then you have 150 kgs of dairy meal. If you divide, then you must be able to calculate this feed in terms of dry matter. We cannot make a lot of judgment of how much these cows are eating by looking at these measurements the way they are written. Because these measurements are written in the quantities as fed, but cows take in their feed in dry matter units. 
So this has to be converted into dry matter. For the dairy meal, because the dry matter is very high, we can let it remain like that. But for the hay, which is six bales and 90 kgs, then we can, we can talk about, that should be about 85% of that quantity is the dry matter. And for the silage, we can work with about 30% of the dry matter to be able to know how much is this feed actually the cow takes in. Because we, do not, we don't count the moisture part of the feed. This should tell you something, that before you put your rations together, you have to know how much is in my feed. This dairy meal, if it is not written on the bag, how much, is, what is in that dairy meal? What are the ingredients of that formulation? If it is not indicated, then you have to take your dairy meal, take it to a good lab and get it analyzed so that you know what is in there. This here, you take a sample and get you see what is in there and silage. So that when a consultant who is doing the nutritional formulations in your farm comes, you can be able to give them an analysis for silage, an analysis for hay, and an analysis for dairy meal. Basically, it is the weaknesses of this fodder that the supplement attempts to fill that gap. So it's very important that you know what is contained. You could be having a very poor quality of, of hay or very poor quality of silage. This is going to determine then what quality of concentrate do you, will, you, will you require. So what are these cows eating? When I do my, um, my calculations, I see that these cows are eating about 26, about, um, I'm trying to see how many, what, what are these cows eating and, and maybe try to understand then what are their weights. Because if you see how much they are being fed, you can actually be able to estimate what their weights are and what kind of uh, production they are having. If these cows are eating 150 kgs, it means they are, they are feeding about 9 kgs point something of dairy milk. These cows could actually be at 20 liters of milk every day. This, this feeding is what is supporting the production. So that tells you that they are being given dairy milk according to their stage of lactation. Then point two, if you combine hay and silage, then you put it as a fraction of the total feed, then you see that these cows are eating 57% of their feed is fodder. Then 43%, which is the remaining, is concentrate and supplement. So this, this farm is doing very well, following the rules. The fodder to concentrate ratio. If they had given too much dairy meal, I would be very concerned if it was more than 50%, but now it is 43% and the rest of it is fodder. When I look at the quality of the silage from my outward judgment, I can see they have between average and above average silage and their hay is very good. So therefore, having a higher amount of fodder, they have been able to comply without fodder, without fodder to concentrate ratio. Always be careful that you do not exceed the amount of concentrate in the fodder. And always remember the supplementation to challenge your cows to give you more milk and always remember to give enough water. All these feeds are great, but without enough water, then these cows are not going to give you that 20 liters and above. For these cows, there should be water all the time. They might end up taking about 60 to about 100 liters per day. So this now, uh, we can be able to conclude this session this way. To say, always observe the combination of concentrate and, 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 and fodder. And to be able to know the measurements of your fodder so that you can be able to determine the formulation of your dairy meal because it depends on how your fodder looks like. Please don't try to correct the mistakes of very weak forages by giving a dairy meal because most likely you now get into a temptation of giving too much dairy meal because your fodders are nutritionally very weak. So that brings us to the end of this session and I hope you like the farm which is able to record what the cows are eating. This means that if a new manager comes into the farm and the other manager has left, they are able to continue carrying on with giving the, the cows as indicated here. And then this also means that the cows are eating the same feed every day. I think that is important to, to learn, that it is every day. Cows don't change their diets like humans. We have to give the same diet every day, up to the time these cows are moving to the mid lactation stage or to the late lactation. Then we begin to withdraw part of the silage. We withdraw part of the dairy meal and give more fibrous feed, perhaps more of uh, feeds that give fiber and not protein because the cow is preparing for, for birth. If we continue feeding the same way, 
then you lose money because you're giving too much feed to the cows who they don't need and they are not required to produce milk because you're moving towards a calving. And you also tend to overcondition the cows and make their bathing very difficult. So be very careful how you administer the rations. It is what determines how much milk you produce and how well your calf, cows are going to give you regular calving periods in a good condition all the time. This brings us to the end of that episode. And please remember to subscribe so that you can continue receiving these lessons as they come.